Hi, just testing one, two, to check on the levels, make sure that they're okay for, for you at your listening end. And I can, seems to be able to hear them coming through loud and clear here, so that should be okay. Uh, thanks for everyone that's uh, that's come along at this moment in time. Had plenty of support in the IB Chemistry Teacher Facebook group, which was lovely to see. And uh, thanks again for uh, supporting my channel. Right, okay, I think that's 6 p.m. Hello, good evening, and a warm welcome to my uh, presentation on Chemistry Internal Assessment Inspirations. So I'm not going to give you any um, specific research questions. I say that and I hesitate a bit because I am going to suggest them quite strongly in uh, certain regards. Thanks for your confirmation, guys. Much appreciated. Um, and we're going to start with... Hi, Tantuja. Uh, we're going to start with laboratory-based uh, investigations. So people uh, who still have access to laboratories and can gather primary data. Um, we're going to have a look at some of those first. Um, that slip takes us to about slide 10. And then after that, we're going to look at some specific um, database ideas which uh, I've seen or I've had. Um, and it's in the spirit uh, of the uh, IB expectations. Hi, Momoi. Welcome to the uh, live stream. Um, just emphasize, research questions are only suggestions. Uh, the range of the independent variable is entirely up to you, the teacher, or you, the student. Um, uh, is limited only by your imagination and the laboratory in which you are currently sat, if you are lucky enough to be in a laboratory. Hi, AC, welcome back. Nice to see you. Um, so, from the IB, students should be coming up with their own ideas, uh, although some guidance and support can be provided. So, the spirit of this live stream is that I'm going to provide some guidance and support for anybody that chooses to watch it or to listen to it. Um, it's probably a bit late for November 20, although there are probably some still just frantically typing away at the keyboard and maybe there's something of use for you here. But uh, certainly the, my colleagues that I'm aware of doing the May 21 sitting are currently generating research questions and uh, looking at potential IAs that they can do. So I hope this is of some use. Um, you can see this chap on the right hand side. Let's check the Apple Pen is working. Uh, this guy here. Yes, it's working. Um, he has a video on uh, how to uh, survive in the pandemic in the age of uh, COVID and uh, you, that you obviously will find that on my channel. Okay. Clarifications. Um, I'm only going to suggest research questions. I'm not telling anybody to do this. It's entirely up to the teacher and the students to decide what they're going to do and how they're going to go about it. Please, if you're a student watching this, welcome. You're very welcome. Um, please speak with your teacher. They are your first port of call. Um, I am getting an increasing amount of traffic uh, for students, which is wonderful, asking questions about their internal assessment. Um, I can't possibly answer the, you know, a dozen is okay. Dozens is more difficult. Hundreds is even more difficult. Um, so please, your first port of call is your teacher and they are your uh, expert in your school. Okay. Um, this is not an exhaustive list by any stretch of the imagina imagination. This is what I had time to put together in the time that I had. Um, I've just been uploading my own IAs for the November sitting for my school, so I fit this in around, uh, around that. It's public, so if you take ideas from here, uh, be aware that the IB will know that this exists. Uh, if you subscribe to In Thinking, Jeff News has referenced my site on there. It's not just a, a shout from me on Trumpet, but just to know that he's obviously very, very close to the IB. They are very much aware of what's going on on this channel. So why have I done it? Well, I've done it to, you know, I felt for my kids here in Singapore. I feel for any kids out there that are struggling to generate a research question. Uh, I feel sorry for teachers that have not had to administer a database or even a reduced access to laboratory uh, IA before. So, you know, academic honesty will result in your diploma not being awarded. Um, I certainly use turnitin.com, most schools do. The IB definitely do. When it's uploaded to the IB, IB system, it will go through a process of uh, checking for plagiarism. So be keenly aware of that. So we're going to continue like in, in this vein for probably the next 15 minutes or so. I've chosen what I see as the most fruitful areas for IB chemistry for primary data internal assessments. So on the left-hand side, you can see that we have a, a range of independent variables. 
and at the bottom we have a range of dependent variables. So you could obviously change the current and look at the gas volume production. Um, you could change the voltage and you could do exactly the same. Or you could change the concentration of an electrolyte and look at the mass lost or the pH change or an alteration uh, of temperature to change the concentration of solution. So within this slide, there are uh, four, four, 16 potential different research questions that students could do. On the right hand side, there are some inspirations. And um, by inspirations, uh, there are a range of inspirations which I will be showing you. Um, so these are all freely available on the web. It didn't take too much of a Google search for me to find these. Um, this one is the rate of hydrogen production in milliliters per hour. I'm sure most schools are able to do that. And a look at the concentration on the x-axis. We can see there are three different voltages which are present on here. And clearly, all we need to do is add a couple more different voltages. We've got our five, do it in triplicate. We've done some data processing. Do some error bars and treat your uncertainties beautifully. And that's the makings of a fantastic little IA. The effect of current on rates. This again is freely available on the interweb. And uh, you can look, we can get the independent dependent variables. I'm not saying this one is done particularly well, by the way. But there's certainly nothing wrong with uh, looking at the method, being inspired by the method, or they've used 0.1 mil per decimeter cubed copper sulfate solution. Why not use 0.25 or 0.03 or whatever floats your boat? They've also gone through and shown you a data table. Um, again, I refer you to my uncertainty video for looking at uncertainties. These look pretty, pretty robust. Uh, 4DP, 3DP, okay, it's not too bad. Um, this is all good, but so it's good reference for you to compare the results that perhaps you would get on a similar research question. Got a nice graph with our error bars there, current against rate of electroplating. Now, this brings me to a good point, hopefully, because most teachers, and I did run this through a person who I'm sure you know, a chap called Richard Thornley before I presented it. He said, James, or Mr. Mitchley, <laughs> Electrolysis is a pain. I said, yes, I know it's a pain. Because, well, why is it? It's a pain because when we set it up, that's bigger, there we go. We set it up and we put our electrodes into our electrolyte in here and we turn it on. We all know what happens. The uh, cathode should grow and it does grow. Um, but sometimes it looks like it's gone down and the anode should slowly dissolve. But the problem is with all the precipitates, obviously, they all fall to the bottom of your solution and they don't stick to the cathode. So in theory, it should grow, but often it just falls to the bottom and you're left with a huge problem of uh, actually uh, recovering all of the uh, precipitate that you, you, you've generated. So yes, I agree, it is difficult. But yes, that also leads on to quite a robust, if you're good, a robust uh, evaluation at the end of your internal assessment, if you can talk about the loss and that being a systematic error present in any electrolysis experiment. So although your data may well be questionable, the manner in which you, the manner in which you treat it is what you are marked upon. So effect of current on rate, that's great. What about effect of temperature on uh, electrolysis of water? If you have a Hoffman voltameter at school, uh, some schools have the micro ones, the small ones. These are very good. This is from the... Uh... Hi, Kevin. Good evening, mate. Good to see you. <laughs> um, this is the electrolysis of water. Why is this useful? It's useful because it gives us parameters for an experiment. Higher level students, I'm sure, will cope with this data here. We can see we've got delta H, well, delta G is delta H minus T delta S, rearranged for delta H, delta G plus T delta S. We've got some coefficients of enthalpy versus entropy. We've got entropy again, and we've got a little graph. And again, you're thinking temperature and voltage. Every school can do temperature and voltage. Clearly, this journal, uh, the iJet journal, didn't need to do the IB, so they only did uh, one, two, three, four different uh, amps or four different volts. 
So, uh, four and two, I'm sorry, I was correct. So just do one more, do it in triplicate, do five data points. You've got a great IA, beautiful. What about copper sulfate? Copper sulfate, every school has some copper sulfates. And I just have a look down here and I can find some, there's a vacant, independence, dependence and control variable. However, now this is a, a terrible, terrible write-up, but we can harvest some really good things from here. Concentration of electrolytes say is one mole. Well, we know it's one mole per decimeter cubed. Time is five minutes. We know that's 300 seconds. We know there's an uncertainty associated with that. They've had a stab at the uncertainty, uh, sorry, at the uh, control variables, but key, um, they've put some rough parameters you can start to be inspired by as you are developing your own uh, research question. Just because it uses two amps, use one, use 0 0.5. And then beautifully, we've got Q equals IT. And we use Avogadro's number, Q equals N, which is electrons times F. And we can work out, we can calculate the amount that should be deposited. We can measure the amount that was deposited. We can talk about the systematic errors because the darn thing keeps falling off. And again, electrolysis has the makings of a wonderful internal assessment. I like electrolysis. Uh, Faraday's law, which builds on the previous one. Colby has a number of internal assessment ideas or it has a number of experiments which you can use as inspiration and you flick through here this is all familiar stuff we've got the galvanic cells here so we've got the electrolytic cell and the galvanic cell compared a um, bit of theory in the background nice exemplar calculations so your kids can be inspired to use those there's more than sufficient data treatment within this using faraday's law to uh, get a really cracking internal assessments Again, we've got starting concentrations, starting volumes, starting temperatures. Change them, make them yours, okay? And as again, I've said in all the videos, the IB do not expect you to be curing well poverty. They do expect you to be inspired by what's out there and make it yours. The really high achieving students, um, I've got a couple this year, bless the cotton socks. They'll be looking at the Nernst equation, which is obviously the effect of concentration on voltage. And a quick search, general chemistry, webassign.net is another good website that you can use. Flip through, what do I see? Familiar stuff. Delta G, RTLNQ, that's in the data booklet. Gives worked examples so the students can use this to be inspired by it. And it gives a procedure so they can put the procedure into their own words and they can use their own different concentrations and their own salts and make it theirs. But in terms of inspiration, this is a fantastic place to begin. And then we all look at the graph and go, oh, now that's brilliant because the log of the concentrations reference to each other. We've got a gradient and we've already got some worked out data that we can use or we can show to our kids. So what a great place to begin. And if you want to really push it out there, get in KSP. I'll come to KSP later because that's not in the IB. So electrolysis, our first little ideas for inspirations and explorations. Next one, kinetics. We love kinetics, everyone loves kinetics. You can uh, change, clearly everyone does, T and C, temperature and concentration. What's wrong with temperature and concentration? Nothing's wrong with temperature and concentration. It will give you perfectly good results. Just a lot of students do it. So within this presentation, I hope they're going to give you some ideas beyond the uh, regular sort of stuff. What about ionic strength? What's ionic strength? Google it, look it up, research it. What about the effective electronegativity on the volume that is produced or the, on the percent absorption or transmittance? I mean, one of these here, this has been done a um, couple of times in my experience in the last couple of years at my school. And the kinetics of crystal violets with sodium hydroxide, you'll find a number of sites which, which do this. There's a bit of uh, differentiation, which is in there, so probably for the higher level kids. We've got some secondary data, we've got some results that we can look at and compare what we got at school with this. Um, and then there's a Michaelis Menton plot there, um, which is the uh, reciprocal of hydroxide against the reciprocal of the uh, ob observed, I assume, transmittance. Um, so we can use this and be inspired by this. We're not stealing, that's a different thing. This is secondary data, use it for your inspiration. The BZ reaction. <clears throat> Sorry, for Giles got a question. Do you give them some specific papers, resources, or their research, everything related to their choice? Great question. I um, I will. It's taken me a number of years of teaching this, 
to actually bring this presentation together when I realised it didn't exist on the internet or what does exist on the internet is effects of temperature on vitamin C and <clears throat> excuse me if, uh, the amount of iron in tablets and all that that stuff which doesn't score well um, so I thought it's high time that I put it together so I would normally uh, Kajal ask them what are they interested in what which topic areas did they enjoy was it acids and bases was it kinetics was it energetics and then lead them perhaps with some ideas uh, from there and help them to develop it using some recommended websites uh, I hope that answers your question the BZ reaction is not only complicated, it's also very well studied. And the theory and the reactions and the radical mechanisms and the discussion around it is a really rich source of beautiful, beautiful chemistry. And it's a thing that you can do at school. And it's also an impressive thing to look at and oscillating, as I'm sure you all know, between the different colors. There are different ingredients that you can use to make it. We normally use uh, malonic acid, uh, trying to think manganous sulfate um, something else is in there's probably starch indicates some iodide or something anyway this one's using bromate and acid you could use this one there are dozens of different variations of the uh, BZ reaction these are some starting concentrations students often don't have a scooby-doo about where to begin with a concentration uh, I still find a number of kids in second year don't have any idea of the scope of uh, concentrations and where they should begin and doing a trial do a trial to work out what they should be doing because that shows personal engagement apparatus is a light box with a blue sheet of plastic everyone can find a light box and a blue sheet of plastic so this is a really great place to start there's some nice uh oh, radius now this this um exploration looks at the radius of the concentric circles as they oscillate throughout the reaction mixture and plotted those uh, against different times which I thought was a very uh, cute way of doing it I've not seen this before uh, not in moderation or in my experience uh, teaching this in my school this is what a great approach I thought this, this was cool we've got exemplar graphs again uh, radius of the oscillation you can do the uncertainty on that against time so it's straightforward it's nice to do it's easy to process the uncertainties they could video it and they could look from the center of here to the outside of each of these circles. What a beautiful spiral. It, it rarely, if ever, does, it doesn't do that. But you can get something closer to approximating that in your school. What about rates of SM1, SM2 reactions? What about the uh, nature of the solvent on the rate of SM1, SM2? What about plotting the polarity? of a mixture of solvents and whether it speeds up or slows down an SM1 or an SM2. What about changing the nature of the leaving group? Uh, you could do this as a real lab primary data experiment, or you could also do it as a database experiment, because all of this is SM1, SM2. There's, there's oodles, if that's a word, oodles of information on the internet. Here's a reference, look up the reference. What did they do? Can I borrow some of this? Can I be inspired by some of this? Of course we can. We're still in kinetics. Peroxide, every fridge has some peroxide. In Singapore, it's under lock and key with a chain and a lock. Um, but peroxide is predictable. It will always work. If you're rushing at the last minute to get an IA together, um, peroxide will decompose. There are some reasonably sophisticated maths that you can do with that. Uh, LibreText is well known, I'm sure everybody listening right now knows this one and you can look into there and you can get some data and you can compare it with that one, there's how to set it up uh, disappearing cross reaction, nothing wrong with doing disappearing cross reaction it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it, do it well, start with the right concentrations you can end up with a really good IA um, instantaneous rate is great for the high level kids so you can change in concentration, change in time and you can plot initial rates and you can maybe get some orders of a reaction. What a great little IA. The classic iodine clock. I have a friend who was a professor of chemistry and I said to him, I'm going to teach kinetics. What do you suggest I do? I'm doing, and he says, just do the iodine clock reaction, James. So it works. So, okay, there's me trying to be original. It works. So why not? Here's what you need. Here's the chemicals. Here's how to make it health safety, no environmental or ethical, here's a solution, mix them together, 
Plot Your Graph, Instantaneous Rates, RSC, Royal Society of Chemistry, thank you very much. Bish bash bosh, off you go. We can get orders from experimental data. Again, another rich source of uh, inspiration for internal assessment is Nuffield Foundation. I'm sure you're familiar with this. Um, I shan't bore you with the details of this one. It is uh, linked out uh, as part of the presentation, which I will share underneath this video. So be creative. By all means, use temperature and concentration. It works. But surprise your moderator, surprise your marker. Use the change in electronegativities of uh, cations for the BZ reaction or, you know, be creative. That's what we want to see, be creative. Energetics, concentration, temperature, again, time. Colorimeters, most schools have colorimeters. There's some great ones on colorimetry. Uh, we'll start at the bottom this time. I'm sure you're all familiar with Doc Brown. Doc Brown has, I think it was, uh, nine different experiments that you can do to measure enthalpy. Change the acids, change the alkalis, change the salts, uh, use a thermometer probe, plot some graphs, get delta T. This is good, classic, really strong, powerful, no problems if it's done correctly. It ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. The makings of a fantastic IA. Borax. Oh, borax. We've all got this in the cupboard, right? Everyone's got some borax. I found this and they linked um, thermodynamic study. So they're using KSP, uh, delta H, enthalpy, Gibbs free energy, entropy of borax. It gives you the equations. It gives you minus R T L N K, delta G is delta H minus T delta S again. But it's looking at borax, borate, equilibrium mixtures. Use this as inspiration, change the temperatures, change the ratios, and then you're going to end up with a fantastic little IA with the right level of IB chemistry, which no moderator can look at and um, mark it down. Uh, Kajal, yes, it is a routine practical, um, but if done well, and if you're rushing, I completely agree, it's not at the top of my list at all, it's just some ideas and some inspirations then um, so it, it works and if you're in a rush I would uh, I would not hesitate to use the disappearing cross for sodium via sulfate um, if it's done well but I take your point Kajal totally enthalpy of neutralization let's change the acids up let's uh, change what they're reacting with here's the method there's the procedure what calculations do you need to do nice little data table which you can borrow and be inspired by and that will also work. Again, if you're at a pinch, you're in a rush, you need to do that, then that would be great. So energetics, I've seen many really good IAs from energetics. Um, as long as you're plotting a graph, you're doing a gradient or you're doing some uh, data processing, you treat your uncertainties well, you're onto a winner. Acids and bases, I found a couple of killer ones in here. Uh, temperature concentration, again. What's the effect of changing the pH? Obviously, link that with Ka, Kb, pKa, pKb. What you're going to measure? Um, effect of pH on buffering capacity. I can see uh, Mr. Kevin Buckley, the star of chemistry in uh, Switzerland right now, I believe, is watching right now, and I think he uh, started or, or he certainly uh, oversaw an internal assessment doing just this. So you've got tables of pKa values, change the acids, measure the pH plot a graph and off you go you've got a beautiful beautiful IA determining pKa half equivalence points that's really nice extent of disassociation you can go into quite some higher level depth uh, on, on this one how do you do it well here's how to determine the pKa of ethanoic or acetic acid we all know how to do it here's an idea for a table but change it up what's the effect on extending the carbon chain length on the pKa of an acid. Continuous data, beautiful. Do it well, do it right, and you're on the way to a really strong, really good IA. Certainly way better than a disappearing cross catcher. Yes. <laughs> um, what's this one? Weak acids and bases, uh, all usual theory, equivalence point, half equivalence point, titration, a bit of Henderson Hasselbach, which uh, used to be in the syllabus. It's now in the option, I believe. But put it in, it shows personal engagements, potassium, hydrogen, phthalate, off you go. And we can do this for different acids uh, after a standardization exercise.
That's really powerful. That's great. Organic chemistry. I put this in because not that many IAs that I see come through using organic chemistry. I already uh, mentioned one which was regards to SM1, SM2, uh, rates of reaction, nature of the solvent, nature of the leaving group, all of those things. Um, again, we can change temperature, concentration, time, we can measure pH, melting point. We're very lucky, um, very lucky indeed. We have a gas chromatograph, so we can do some of these, but you don't need to have one. I found this lovely uh, idea here, uh, extracting limonene from citrus. Uh, again, I use a lot of university websites when I'm steering the kids on what they're thinking of, of doing. Uh, I find that uh, certainly even the references at the end of each one of these are going to be great. So this one tells me how to make aspirin, gives me TLC and chromatography, a bit of theory, SM1, SM2, Grignard reagents, I don't suggest that's, that's, I've, that's had that blow up on me before. Free radical chlorination, don't do that either. But the isolation of limonene on page 23, which is up here, I thought, what a great little idea. And the kids would love to do it because it's gonna smell nice, it's gonna look nice. Um, how do we do it? Well, we use ethyl acetate, which we've all got in the cupboard, pet ether, um, ferrocene, uh, I mean it's by those. <laughs> um, we're going to separate by TLC, or you can do it by GC. We can look at the nature of the polarity of the groups. Uh, we can certainly add some beautiful organic chemistry into there. And here it is, working out extraction of limonene and other terpenes using steam distillation. Okay, don't do the chlorine radical, that's just hideous. Um, caffeine from energy drinks, I think this might be DCM or dichloromethane. Uh, certainly, um, if you're allowed to do it and you want to use a fume cupboard and you don't mind a bit of danger, have a go at this one. Um, this is the uh, permanent link to the uh, actual paper, which, which is in there. It usually is dichloromethane or uh, I've had limited results with, with acetone. Uh, you're welcome to have a look at that one. Okay, I'm quite a big fan of green chemistry and uh, this one that I found, uh, we've got the lovely environmental awareness, uh, caring for the planet, which uh, should inspire any young person doing their IBIA. And uh, this is changing, exchanging traditional organic solvents for some green solvents. This is kind of leaning more towards database and how they can do it. But it begins with very known chemicals and things that we are used to using and it can easily be extrapolated into an IA, I humbly suggest. Simulations, I've changed my mind, don't do it. <laughs> if anybody wants to comment now or later or email me and tell me they've found three or four simulations to study even a simple thing like the iodine clock reaction and it gives different results each time and it gives you uncertainty so you can propagate it. I will eat my hat. I've looked and looked, my kids have looked and looked and we um, just can't find it. So um, Kajal, I can see the green website there. That was tandfonline.com. Do you get that Kajal? tandfonline.com. I'll share the presentation underneath. Okay, cool, no worries. So yeah, uh, simulations, just just don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> if you can't get an uncertainty, it, the beauty of simulations is when you're teaching, it gives the same results every time. You know what you're going to get. But the point of IA is the variation that's in there, how you treat that variation, how you discuss your systematic and random errors and all the things that we all know, right? So there must be, I don't know, over 30, maybe 40 different ideas uh, for primary data internal assessment. And I didn't once mention effect of temperature on vitamin C in orange juice. <laughs> okay, second part of today's presentation is some ideas of databases to inspire you. Um, again, uh, this person here on the right hand side, uh, this chap has a video on the pandemic edition uh, of how to uh, write an IA. I humbly suggest you have a look at that. Uh, we're running about 3,000 views and it's currently linked on In Thinking by Jeff News. So hopefully we're doing something correct. Just to reiterate, uh, this is from my database video as well. 
when we're doing databases, use multiple databases. Use multiple independent and dependent variables because if we don't, we're not going to hit the 10 hours and we're not going to get a very good score. We need error propagation, which is normally the difference between different sites. And the precision in the reported data is going to be the last decimal place. Or in some, some, which we'll see, you do get the uncertainty given uh, from the database itself. And you must obviously include error analysis. Again, clarifications, academic honesty, dishonesty will result in your diploma not being awarded. Again, this has been created to help schools and students in particular who have not had access to a laboratory for a considerable period of time and either pulling their hair out for November 20 or are now starting to get stressed about May 21. This is supporting guidance, nothing else. These are inspirations. So let's have a look. I begin with esterifications. Seems a strange place to begin, but I thought I had to start somewhere. What about the surface area of the molecules, the van der Waals radius? What about dipole moments? You can see tables of dipole moments for different esters. Clearly, the length of the carbon chain of the alcohol and the acid that goes into making it and the effect on the melting point, boiling point, van der Waals forces, all of these things are readily available on the interweb. You can measure the rate, you can measure Kc and Q, you can calculate Kc and Q. You can look at different yields from different websites. It didn't take me a great deal of time to find data on, officially, as we all know, it's called the Fisher Esterification. So this is from MIT. It's like, MIT, wow. What's that? What a great reference. My reference is MIT. So we've got the safety. We all know we've got methanol, ethanol, propanol. Oh, this, oh look. This looks like an IBIA, extending carbon chain length. And then, as you guess, it carries on with formic, methanoic, butanoic, smells of dog poo, uh, propanoic acetic, and it puts them together, makes the ester, even tells you the aroma. It gives you the density. Is there a relationship, is there a relationship between density and boiling point? Is there a relationship between, well, we know there's a relationship between boiling point and intermolecular forces. What is it? Can we look at the different substitution and look at the effect on spectra? Um, just some ideas. The beautiful thing about this is it gives me some lovely background. If in an exploration, it gives me the mechanism of hysterification with formal positive charges and flows of electrons and a concerted mechanism, I'm moderating, I'm thinking this kid is totally engaged in this they've explored widely beyond the syllabus. I'm already looking at the top bands on PE exploration. And if it's correct, I'm looking at communication already thinking, this is really good, this is powerful. And it's from MIT, which is a great thing. Okay. We're not gonna be able to do atmospheric distillation, maybe, because the lab shuts. But we can look at the IR, the NMR. IR and NMR are in the syllabus. We all know how to do that. We'll show a bit of exploration. Look at the Raman spectroscopy. Match it with the mass spectroscopy. What's the link between the two? Bit of theory. And then again, some beautiful uh, mechanistic detail, which I saw in an IA. I'd be like, yeah, this kid knows what they're doing or they care what they're doing. We've got a Kleisen condensation. We've got rear pinnacle rearrangements. It's like, this is all stuff coming back to your beautiful brains from university, right? So that's a very rich source. I saw that and I was like, wow. I shared this on the database video, and this is 64 different databases. Now, I've looked at all of these, okay? Um, PubChem was okay, zinc, not so good, e-molecules, not that useful. When I looked at all of them, my top most useful database websites were NIST. NIST I found easiest to use for a simple person like me. And the other one was, was it SDBS? I think it was SDBS. But we'll come to that one and look at the database stuff, not Wikipedia. It doesn't take a great deal to find some kinetic data. And I looked here, and again, I looked at the graph, and I thought, oh, look at that. Three different temperatures. One, two, three, four, five different uh, plots. So they've got five, but they've only got three. So we need another two. But surely we've got to add another two. That can't be beyond the wit of man or beast. And of course you can. We've got a natural log on the y-axis against time. 
That's beautiful data processing. No problem with that whatsoever. So there is a number, and this could, this could apply to any organic reaction that you care to mention. What's the surface area? Dipole moment, Van der Waals radius. And what's, what's the effects on the rate, or KC and Q, or yield? So hopefully that's, you know, again, this is an inspiration presentation, not a you should do this. Energetics, classically, kids do the uh, homologous series of the alkanes or the alcohols or whatever they choose to do. Look at this, maybe the molecular surface area I had a really high score in one a couple of years ago where it correlated molecular surface area with lattice enthalpy and bond enthalpy. Again, you've got to have many independent variables, a number, several independent variables, several dependent variables for a database-based IA. So we could take uh, it's the effect of a homologous series extending on lattice enthalpy, covalent character on bond enthalpy, molecule surface area on the enthalpy of whatever you want, enthalpy of solvation, enthalpy of hydration, um, just check this question. For primary data IAs, if the main marking point is how I do it, what should be the focus of a database IA? You know, because I'm not doing any reactions <laughs> or anything. Well, yeah, I suppose the quick answer, uh, Momo, is it depends what you are doing. Um, if you're referring to the research question, so that's the focus. The focus is the research question. You could talk about what's the effect of uh, increasing carbon chain length on bond enthalpy and the enthalpy of combustion. So I'm making the point that you don't need to be hung up like we have been for a long time on having a very succinct, clear one IV, one, D, uh, one, IV, one DV, one independent, what's the effect of X on Y? It can be, and we encourage it to be, what is the effect of X and X on Y and Y, if that makes sense. So you can have two IV and two DV. You could have more you may be thinking well that makes no sense well it makes sense when you think you've got to hit 10 hours and that's the criteria when your moderator looks and goes oh they looked at increasing carbon chain length on the enthalpy of combustion that must have taken them two hours two hours we know because we're chemistry teachers that's who moderates it's not um gandalf up in the cloud it is actual real life chemistry teachers so they know roughly how much it's taken you to do each thing and for database, it's not enough to have one IV and one DV. One more, does that hopefully answer your question? I hope it does. Okay. So, spectroscopy. Now, this is a, a I think this is a very fruitful area for um, database IAs. And it's not being done a great deal. In my humble experience, maybe in my moderation sample, they just chose not to do it for the schools that I was chosen to, to moderate. Um, I've known one kid do it, and it was very successful. Because you can look at any homologous series, the alkanes, the alkenes, the aldehydes, the ketones, the esters. There's so many you can look at. And you look at the effect of different types of substituents. Is it halogens? Is it alcohols? Is it a phenyl group? Again, the possibilities are endless. So what's the effect? What's the effect on... The wave number on uh, IR spectrum. Is there a calculation? There is. Is there a calculation that you can do to calculate the expected wave number? What's the difference between that and the observed wave number, which you can find on SDBS, which I'll click into in a minute. What's the effect of moving the functional group in uh, positional isomerism on the chemical shift in an NMR spectrum? Can you correlate that with the IR spectrum? That to me seems like a robust, great beginning to a wonderful database IA. Right, Kajal, I think for database the focus is secondary research, number of databases used and how the students use them for analysis. Kajal agreed entirely, yes. Uh, Harry, shouldn't there only be a single DV and multiple IVs because what variables would be correlated? Harry, the, I suppose the answer is depends how, um, how rich is that the right word? How rich, yes, the dependent variable is. If you're just looking at effect of uh, substituent position and nature of substituents on the wave number, I don't think that's 10 hours. That feels like two thirds of the way there. But look at type of substituent and substituent position, if we can say that, on the wave number and the chemical shift in an INMR spectrum, that feels like 10 hours. 
Other people may disagree. Again, this is only the views of Mr. Midgley. I don't claim to be the world's uh, leading expert on, on any of this. I can just speak from, from my experience. So, Harry, maybe if it was a rich DV, yes. Yes, that could work. Um, but it would need to be extensive and uh, backed up with lots of research from many databases uh, to make that acceptable as a high scoring IA. So I hope that meets your uh, question. SDBS, I mentioned it. Let's have a look. Maybe you know this already. I only discovered it this year because we had to do some uh, database work. But this is beautiful. I've not used it on the iPad Pro before. It worked on the MacBook Pro uh, earlier. Come on, you can do it internet. You can do it, there we go, okay. So you can even do it in Japanese if you really want to. Uh, you've got to agree to the disclaimer. Yes, I agree. It was all going so well. Agree to the disclaimer. Okay, look, use SDBS. It's clearly not playing for me at this moment in time. Use SDBS. You just type in the name and it will give you the thermodynamic data. It will give you the spectra, the NMR, the IR. It'll even give you GC. Um, that's a very rich source of uh, spectral data. MSU is the same. It's got some of the basic stuff that's in there. It will give you the typical wave numbers that you can expect. And you can convert frequency and wavelength. And you can look at different uh, groups and how they affect different regions of the IR spectrum. But I would steer towards the two, the one that I mentioned earlier, NIST and SDBS, as perhaps the two best which are on that little list there. KSP, I said I'd come back to it. I came back to it. Why KSP? Well, KSP is on the A-level syllabus. It's on the, I think it's on the AP syllabus. It's not on the IB syllabus. It's on the HSC syllabus, if you do an Australian curriculum. What does it show? It shows that you've gone and read beyond what is on the IB syllabus. So your personal engagement, your exploration, and your communication are already looking pretty damn strong. So you need to get your exploration up, your analysis up, and your, your evaluation up, and you're on the path to a wonderful IA. And KSP is no different from KC or KA or KB or any of the other Ks that we all love and hold dearly. We can correlate KSP with delta G. That sounds good. How on earth do we correlate KSP with the Gibbs free energy? Well, here is a university reference here, solubility product constants. And look at that, just straight away. We've got all the barium, cadmium, cobalt, etc., etc. What's the effects? What's the link between the lattice enthalpy and KSP? What's the link between the uh, ionic radius, the lattice enthalpy, the KSP, and delta G, wow, wow. And it's all in here, it's all there. And there are plenty of other places that you can find it within. Solubility series, again, it's just the same as a KC or a KA calculation. It's just ratios, that's all you're doing. Plug-in concentration terms in. And if you want worked examples of what you can do, well, a quick search here on SR data, again, on NIST. You look at tertiary alcohols, you can look at nitromethane, you could look at ethene, if students, not high level um, and halogenated benzene you can click into there and look at the solubility series and look at that straight away you just click in look at the effect of uh, ortho meta and para substitution on ksp and lattice enthalpy what a rich wonderful potential ia structure structure again i'm going beyond the ib syllabus because i like to it, it excites me Body center cubic, face center cubic, atomic radii, electronegativity. What's the effects on melting, boiling, density, solubility? Look, the IB data booklet is actually pretty good. It's a good source. The kids can research different structures, look at different structures of crystal salts, and they can correlate that with the things that they know that they've been doing in class. They can look at their solvation enthalpies, or they can look at lattice enthalpies, and they can look at standard structures and correlate those and calculate and again the makings of a wonderful database IA. NIST SDBS and I would also put ChemSpider in there so sorry SDBS didn't work let's see if ChemSpider is going to work it, it was as straightforward on the uh, MacBook as just typing in the uh, chemical let's try and put a bit of ethanol into here go and then on ChemSpider as you go through, oh, that's okay. 
So you can click on the ID, what's going to come up, I wonder. Okay, so we've got uh, properties, we've got melting, boiling point, uh, flash points, uh, GC data, and then at the top we've got the spectra, and uh, if you want to buy some, that's where you buy it from. Uh, and then organics databases, classically homologous series. I've seen people looking at different catalysts, ligand deorbitals on the synthetic utility. That's a great one. Um, green chemistry is back in here again. Sigma Aldrich, supplier of many chemicals, bless them. Um, so all I'm just showing you hopefully is a number of different uh, sites and uh, there's been plenty on here that you can use. Now this would match with the previous one which I was sharing with greener alternatives to standard chemicals. Okay, So how can you increase the energy efficiency of, I don't know, an E1, E2 reaction or of both of them? And certainly this is a great place to start. And then looking at the references which they use at the bottom and where they've gone and degradation pathways is a great database idea. RF value and solvent composition or molecular size. That's a nice thing to do, isn't it? What's the link between the drug, stru drug structure and, and side effects? I teach the medicines and drugs option. I really like it. Um, other people like the human biochemistry. It's up to you. But you can find many, many sites with uh, its extent of placebo effect and whether the side effect correlates with the functional group. So another rich source. So again, these are not research questions I'm saying you must do you should do you could do this is an inspiration for you to think oh maybe I'll do something with green chemistry maybe I'll look at solvent composition on whatever interests you what interests you is the point that I'm trying to get across so extensions uh, you can have a look at my video on how to uh, mark a database IA that'll kind of finish off quite nicely the database section of these ideas so flicking through there is many, or there are many independent and dependent variables, ideas in here for you to perhaps begin an exploration from here. Or even if you pushed for time, you do one of the quick, easy ones, get some data and get five or a six out of your IA. Hopefully that's not you and you have time and you're not uh, submitting your work until May 21. Uh, so that kind of ends today's presentation. Uh, hopefully that's added to uh, people's understanding. And certainly uh, I looked before this on the videos that exist on generating research questions. And uh, I felt there was a hole in the market. I thought this would uh, hopefully begin some further discussion on uh, decent uh, research questions. So a copy of this will be linked underneath the video when I post it to my channel. If you want to, to use it in your class or you want to have a look at some of the link outs which uh, I've put in there. But other than that, that's it. Thank you very much indeed for listening. I trust that was of some use. I'll stay on for a couple of minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, please type them into the chat. Thank you. Cheers, Kevin. Cheers, mate. Hope you get some snow. <laughs> Send some my way. <laughs> it's still hot and sticky in Singapore. Cheers, Kajal. Thanks always for your support, mate. Okay, if you've got any questions, there is an email link on my uh, channel. Just go to the About section and you can email me from there. But other than that, I'm going to end the stream there. I'm going to get my dinner. Okay, thanks for listening, guys. Have a great day, great evening. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Oh, comment, like, subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> thanks very much. Catch you later.